I don't think I want to be diabetic. How about you? Hmm? <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. I'm back. Um, as you see in the title, avoid becoming diabetic. I don't want to be diabetic. I don't think nobody would like to be diabetic. You might say, well, it's obviously I don't want to be diabetic, so I just try to eat well and um, be careful with sugars and carbs. But there's a little bit more than just that. Um, there is stages, um, there's diabetes type 1, type 2, or the ones that most people will know about are um, type 1, type 2. But what about pre-diabetic or um, insulin resistant? Hmm? Hmm? See? There's more than just type 1 and type 2 and just be careful with sugar. If you don't know, insulin is a very powerful hormone. It's very powerful and it does a lot of stuff throughout your body but when it's not in control or when you are not really when you're not careful with um, your insulin levels things can get out of hand um, insulin is unfortunately responsible for your fat store process so what happens in the body so when every time you eat something or drink something, um, there are spikes or insulin. So your body sends signals um, and insulin is released to control your glucose in your body and your blood. So every time you eat something, especially high in sugars or carbohydrates or refined sugars, uh, you'll get a real high spike of insulin and those are the ones you want to avoid you don't want to have those and if you think about a normal average people um, that you're not just having breakfast lunch and dinner but sometimes you have snacks or or candies or things throughout the day that are not your main meal so you don't consider that you know oh I have ate a lot because you know sort of little things but it doesn't matter. Insulin is is not gonna discriminate or uh, make distinctions about what you're eating. You as soon as you eat something and it's high in sugar, it will spike up. And unfortunately, it takes a couple of hours to for those insulin levels to come come back down. So what happens? You're not thinking about it. You don't realize this. Um, and it's time to eat something again. So if these insulin levels are coming down, you eat something again and it boop, spikes back up. And you are in this up and down throughout the day. And in the presence of insulin, there will be no um, real weight loss because the body needs to deal with this issue before it can do other stuff. And it can do a lot of stuff at the same time. But unfortunately for us, when we're trying to lose weight, it doesn't really help us. Insulin is a much powerful hormone than um, whole, the, the human growth hormone and all that. So there's ways to avoid it, of course. If you have um, low carbs diets, obviously will help. And obviously I, uh, I'm a big fan and promoter of keto, which is high fat and low carb. And why is this so important for many people with insulin resistance or pre-diabetic stages um, to, to know? Because uh, fats, and this is not something that has been talked about a lot. I mean, it's like they don't want you to think this way because it helps them get you sick so they can sell more medicine. This is just the truth. Um, but fat... They, they ingrain in their brains the fat is the enemy and you shouldn't eat fat obviously not cheap raggedy fat I'm talking about healthy good fats um, when I say high fat I want to make sure that's clear to everybody I'm talking about healthy good fats not you know what it is um, 
because fat, uh, they don't want to really know all this, but fat doesn't barely or never triggers insulin. Hmm. So you're telling me that I can eat more healthy, good fats and barely triggers insulin. There you go. So you could, not, you don't have to be hungry throughout the day um, because you're having a low carb, uh, uh, low sugar diet. You can eat stuff, just you gotta be smart of what you're eating. This way you're not triggering insulin so much throughout the day. That is also why intermittent fasting is so powerful because you limit yourself of your of your um, meal intake. What is this doing? This is avoiding you from consuming anything and therefore you won't spike your insulin. It won't go up. Way for uh, your body to maintain a very more stable levels of blood glucose in your body and therefore you won't have those insulin spikes and if you do this and if you develop your own program of what you want to do and all that um, for a longer time you will avoid becoming pre-diabetic insulin resistant and even diabetic and this is the truth um, there's many, 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 many people living right now with insulin resistance and don't even know that they are actually in the, living like that. And it's very sad, and it's very sad because, I mean, you are walking yourself towards becoming diabetic, and then once you are diabetic, and it's, you know, you don't want to use it. It's sad, it's horrible. But that diabetic, it doesn't just happen. For many years, I keep hearing this mentality that diabetic is something you can inherit from your family member, from your grandmother, your mother, your uncle, your cousins, or whoever. Because it's in your family, um, there's a good chance that you become diabetic too, and that is just not true. It is not true. I believe myself, I believe that the mentality is because it makes sense that in one in one group of family members, if a few people in the same family group had diabetic, then everybody else is at risk and it's just because it's one group. Therefore, if you think about it, when you're growing up, and your kids, most families, everybody's eating together, mom or grandma or whoever is cooking the food um, or serving food will give everybody the same things and everybody eats the same way. And therefore, if everybody has the same bad habits, then yes, there's a good chance that everybody will get the same problems. But if you remove yourself from the situation, like in my case, I can speak of experience. Um, my mother is diabetic. My two brothers are diabetics. I'm not sure my sisters are, but I'm 100% sure my two brothers and my mother are, and um, other members of the family. And so a few years ago, went to the doctor and talked about it and I had the same mentality well they're diabetic there's a good chance that I could have diabetes too so I want to keep myself in check and that doctor told me that that's just not true if I remove myself from the situation and, and turns off eating better types of food and exercises and doing what I'm supposed to do I don't necessarily have to become diabetic. I can avoid becoming diabetic by just doing those things that the rest of them are not doing. And and this is, I said a few years, but this is like eight years ago. I mean, this is a long time ago. And I keep myself in check. And now I have to keep checking myself and I have, I'm not diabetic or anything. But my sugar levels were really high. They were because I... I was 
a carb addicted. I mean, I can eat bread and rice like it's no tomorrow. I will eat a lot of carbs. It's, it is an addiction. Sugar is addictive. So I have to change those eating habits. And with keto, it's amazing because you know you have to really restrict the carbs and open up your fat intake. So when I do eat my big meal, I don't worry much about it because fat doesn't really trigger insulin and my carbs are very, very low and I'm not talking about refined sugars or breads or none of that. Um, therefore, I can control my sugar levels for longer. And there are carbs in vegetables. There are carbs, so it's not like you are going to go <clears throat> so low in your sugar levels that you know all their problems can develop that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is you have to really reduce and if you are diabetic already well type one when you actually have to um administer insulin to your body not much they can do there you are already in that stage i mean you can control it you can control it you can even do keto and control your whole overall stay but there are other um, things you have to consider when you are diabetic type 1 okay with diabetes type 2 though and and, and this is amazing this is a, a, a this is a true story this is with happens with my mother um, we are from Puerto Rico and she comes from Puerto Rico and before she was with me um, her insulin her di insulins though were all over the place and it was always a struggle for her to keep her sugar levels under control. Um, mainly because, you know, ignorance and you don't know what you're doing really. So she would stop eating many things and lose a lot of weight. And she was just not doing the right things to keep herself uh, in a more stable level of insulin or sugar. So when she was, she finally was living with me and I took her to the doctor and we talked about it and obviously I was in the beginning of learning what the keto diet was and all and I said why don't you just try this with me since it's low carb, high fat, let's just see what's going on. And she started, she was doing pretty good with me and we went back to the doctors, they do her bloods every three months, every six months kind of thing and her A1C which is the the number that will give the physicians the idea whether a person is in high risk for diabetic for diabetes or already diabetic and so her numbers were really high when she first came and we started dealing with it you know medication and the diet and when we went back six months after three months after six months after um, her A1C number drop very very significantly and this I mean this doesn't mean that she was diabetes free uh, but she was coming off of that situation because diabetes type 2 you're only in medication and it's just uh, your sugar levels are really really high in your blood so they'll want to control that with medication now what happened now will all this really works for her um, which is why I wanted to make this video for people out there who is dealing with diabetes type 2 or pre-diabetes or insulin resistant this diet this lifestyle will help you um, reverse those issues so she did came to really good number um, her A1C was really really low it was 5.4 below and if you're already diabetic those numbers are amazing for anybody who already is diabetic knows this um, I want, I'm gonna put a chart of the A1C levels maybe somewhere here or towards the end of this video so you can get an idea of normal levels risk levels and really really bad numbers um, so what happens with her? She got kind of comfortable and thinking, oh, everything is doing good. And she gained some weight. She was in a healthier uh, weight and all, but got too comfortable and start kind of tweaking and eating things again, a couple of bread and rice. And although she was thinking she was not eating the same 
um, amounts or anything, her numbers went up again. Yep. She started feeling kind of weird, so we had an appointment. We went to the doctor. She wanted to do some blood work, and boom. Check her blood levels again, and her insulin went back up again. And so I'm able to see that firsthand change from a super high um, high uh, insulin levels. Her A1C was really high to the drop when she was doing keto, doing keto, and then again up when she kind of started messing around with carbohydrates and sugars again. So we're back in the system trying to control it again and back to the diets that she was doing before. It's kind of hard for um, people who are stuck in a, in a mentality set of what you consider good to eat or not eat. But if you're already sick, you have to make different types of decisions regarding your health. Okay? And now, me personally, like I said, I was, I've never been diagnosed with diabetes or anything, but I have few signs of um, insulin resistant issues, which, like I said before, this is kind of before you go creeping into becoming diabetic and you don't want to be there, you don't want to go there. I've seen it, I, it is something you don't want. Even if I manage to be keto for the rest of my life, the idea of being diabetic and doing it because now I'm sick is something I don't want in my life. You don't, you don't want to just disregard an, a bad issue or, or something that could become bad just because you want to deny it. You want to deny it in your head that you are not sick or you don't, you don't have any problems. Um, and it's not a major problem right now, but it could become a really bad problem if your body doesn't know what to do with insulin because you're always in these up and down situations and, and don't have it under control. So you, you kind of want to take a look at that. And this diet, and you can do low carb. You don't have to be in a keto diet to be eating low carbohydrates. If you lower your carbs, you can probably manage insulin better. Um, but this diet, this lifestyle, helps you with so many other things that is so much worth it to do it opposed to do just low carb um, there's no real benefit in just low carb you can lose weight and manage your insulin but you can do keto and do the same thing plus have better mental clarity better skin better health hair uh, many other things more energy and so if if I have to do it to become healthier, but have so much more benefits for myself, then it's a no-brainer which one should you do, right? Also go to your doctor, and this is not something you can buy in the pharmacy, of course, but if you keep yourself in check every year, you should. Um, you can make sure you get work, blood work done and ask for A1C. A as an apple, number one, and C. So you can uh, know your levels, your results, and your number. And it's a good way for you to, um, once you know your number at this time, at this moment, you can go six months or three or four months or whenever you want to go back and check it again and see the difference in your A1C numbers. Again, I wanna mention this and stress this. You don't have to become diabetic because some people in your family are. It is just not true. Not true. You can take care of yourself, you can eat better, you can exercise, and take yourself from that equation, period. You don't have to worry about it. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I didn't want to make it too long. If you have any questions about this, I know there could be a lot more that I can go into, but I don't want to make my videos too long. If you have any questions about insulin and keto, and what is so wonderful, if, if you have any doubts or questions, you can leave me a comment down below. I'll be glad to answer. Uh, stay strong and stay healthy. Stay keto strong. And like and share and subscribe if you like these videos. See you guys.